And it has been a month, a month plus, and I don't know what's going on in the world. You're all going to have to fill me in. The American dream is dead. And uh, we lost hope. So I feel dead inside like John Wick, and I'm now going to go on a mission to destroy everything in my path. That is where I'm at. I am dead inside and don't care about anything other than my family, I guess. I care about them still. But that's it. It's been a, a lot. So thank you for your patience. We meant to come back last week and then um, tragedy struck and we lost our mascot and the heart of the show and the little spirit that bounded around and lots of you knew her and loved her from all of the behind the scenes, especially the old ones in the garage when they would be outside and she would make appearances. So thank you for your support, your messages, your love. We will do our best to make burgers out of your sacred cows. <laughs> That's what we do here at Dumpster Fire and keep on pressing through into the final countdown. The last three months before the election that has been coming for seemingly an eternity. I feel like we've been covering this election since 2020. Yeah. Like it started immediately. And now here we are in the final, final countdown. I was watching the old dumpster fire just to catch up on where we left off. And it was right after Trump was assassinated. I mean, not assassinated, attempted. He, <laughs> he's dead, guys. You didn't hear? It was right after the attempted assassination, and it feels like the world is completely different since then. And, you know, Biden has stepped aside bravely and now been replaced with Kamala. <laughs> who is all about joy. So we're going to have lots of joy on this episode and just good vibes, everyone. And there was much rejoicing. Everything is good vibes and joy. No substance, no policy, just feel good, empty vessel for the establishment. I hope you all had a good summer. I want to hear about it. Tell Maggie in the comments how you're doing. I want to know how you're doing. You know how I'm doing. Dead inside John Wick. Um, probably a good place to be if I'm in the media, to be honest. And I do want to know how you're doing. Did you touch grass or did you just spend all summer engaging in a stupid culture war that the elites want us to imagine we're having with one another so that they can control all the resources? This spy has already breached our defenses. Just let us know. I realized when I was watching last month that... I was wrong. Showmanship is more powerful than the <laughs> fight or flight instinct. I was wrong about that. Trump is going to always be Trump. He cannot help himself. Even though his handlers probably wish he could. I don't think anyone can handle an 80 year old man with billions of dollars. And he was on his way to sticking the landing. A quick half hour acceptance speech. Thank you for the nomination. I've been changed by this event. And then just get off, land, put your hands up and be victorious. But no, he went for like two more fucking hours airing his grievances and all of his things and his greatest hits. And he just can't help it. They're coming from prisons. They're coming from jails. They're coming from mental institutions and insane asylums. Boom, boom, boom. You know, it's nice to get along with somebody who has a lot of nuclear weapons. Our next Republican convention in Venezuela, because it will be safe. Has anyone seen Silence of the Lambs? He can't help it. So, yeah, I was wrong about that. And I'm wrong about pretty much everything, in case you hadn't noticed, <laughs> watching this show. If you want to be right, just watch this show and bet on whatever the opposite is of what I'm saying. So, we've been in Normieville for a month. For those of you who have been in your fallout shelter, like I have been in Maggie's political bunker... <laughs> surrounded by normies. This is just going to be a quick overview of everything that we missed and everything that's been going on. And 
it has been instructive to be around normies. I have love for all of my family members and they're an ideologically diverse group of people. And they, like, I don't care who you vote for. I know this is a controversial thing to say and they're like, this is the fight for democracy from both sides of the aisle screaming this at me. But I don't really care because I'm dead inside. (laughs) <laughs> and I do not, I just, I also feel like that's your right as an American vote for whoever you feel like you need to vote for. I really can't express how much I do not give a shit. If you're here to have your biases confirmed and have you feel like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not going to be that person for you. You have to go to some other person out there. I'm the only the person who's going I'm very confused about everything, and I don't understand what's going on in the world at all. I have no idea what's going on. That's what you come here for. An affirmation that you are not alone and feeling like, what the fuck is going on? I also don't blame you if you hate both these options still. I really don't. And I understand if you're going to hold your nose and vote for Kamala or hold your nose and vote for Trump. Usually people have to hold their nose and vote for somebody in this country. It is the American way. (laughs) If you've been around normies, you know that they've mostly tuned out and they've already decided who they're voting for. I don't know who even cares about this. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. I don't. I want you to let Maggie know in the comments if you are truly torn about who you're going to vote for or email us at I am politically homeless at gmail.com. So for those of you who have been in a bunker, Kamala is the new nominee. And I do think it's funny that the like the, the parties are they're like crossing over one another and switching. The party of law and order nominated a felon, the party of a cab nominated uh, a like cop. I do actually think like this isn't even about policy. I think Kamala could come out and have Trump's policies. Like, oh, let's build the border wall. And people would still vote for her because it's really just a not Trump vote, which I also do understand. I don't understand the derangement around it. It's like the hatred and the it really clouds like every part of your day and being. I do understand just being sick of having to hear him and deal with him in in media and in politics for three election cycles and people just wanting to be done with that. I think I think he is the kind narcissist wear people out. That's like that. That's their kind of signature move. And I think more than anything, he's not Hitler. He's just like annoying people now. So that's even more dangerous. And I do think the Democrats are smart and they've realized that. I think that's why they're trying to pivot to like, we're patriots now. You're not. Everything's about joy. It won't be for long. Don't worry. And, oh, we like, we don't care. He's not really Hitler. He's just like a a dude who's weird. Like, you guys, so now we're in weird Hitler? Like, this is where you guys, this is the messaging that's going forth? I don't understand what the F is going on, but it's terrifying. (laughs) (laughs) And I just think that we're, like, in TikTok society now. We're just in the TikTok world. Hopefully we'll get to the point where people announce their candidacies just like they do in the UK where it's like a flash election and it's just people do flash dances out in the streets to try and get support for their candidates and then they turn into mass shootings probably and it's like ends up being whoever gets the most flash dances and TikTok support wins the election in like 24 hours. That's that's the future I see for America. Like, can you TikTok dance your way to the presidency? Dark Brandon dropped out of the race on National Ice Cream Day after cold blooded Nancy Pelosi threatened <laughs> threatened him. Do it the easy way or do it the hard way. No one wants an 84 year old woman who's been in politics her entire life and made hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, Coming after you with her threats of sharing all of your secrets about you and your son and whatever scandalous shit she has on them. So he withdrew on National Ice Cream Day because we do live in the Matrix, according to Andrew Tate. The Matrix has attacked me. And... uh, 
Maybe Andrew Tate was on to something. Dark Brandon did manage to show up at the DNC and give his exit interview at 11 p.m. After everybody went to bed, including me, I tried to stay up for it, but they bumped him out of prime time because they couldn't trust that he wouldn't accidentally accept the nomination. <laughs> Which is the only reason anyone really tuned in. I mean, they just like swapped. There's no primary. They just swapped her in. I don't even know if this is legal. They were joking about it at the convention because dark Gavin Newsom, who can't even can barely contain his rage that Kamala got the nomination and they didn't put him in. Uh, Because who cares at this point? You can just swap anyone in. They probably could have. And he was joking like, oh, that's what I've been told. Ha ha. To say this was a ground up movement. How are you feeling about the switch? I mean, (laughs) the switch. (laughs) Now we went through a very open process. A very (laughs) inclusive process. Uh, I was bottom up. I don't know if uh, you know that. Yes, that's what I've been told to say. Yes. They were like, ha, 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 all these dudes who, like, if you didn't know any better, would think they owned a plantation or something. (laughs) They are so smug and pompous, and he is so mad. He is raging. That's true, because it's true. The only thing that makes me happy about Kamala getting this nomination is how fucking mad it made Gavin Newsom. And everybody knows they hate each other, even though they pretend to like each other. And that guy didn't get... Any time on the main stage, he got an interview from the floor. He must be just raging, raging mad. And they were all joking like, ha, ha, ha. This was like, a, there was no primary. It was a flash primary or whatever they were calling it. So I'm glad you all think it's hilarious that you just subverted democracy and didn't really consider the will of the people and just put this lady in and now everybody's got to go along with it. But if you were willing to vote for a literally dead guy, of course you're going to vote for Kamala. That's not, that's not a no brainer, no pun intended. You're just swapping out someone, an empty person with no brain who's 80 for an empty person with no brain who's like young and kind of vibrant and can do some TikTok dances. They waited till the last minute to yank Peepaw's license and now they're scrambling. They're really trying to like capture this whole Obama 2008 vibe. By the way, white ladies for Kamala and everybody who supports her, learn how to pronounce her name. We did. First you say comma like a common sentence. Then you say la like la 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 la. When she was getting the vice president nomination, we learned it here on Dumpster Fire because nobody really knew. And everybody kept saying Kamala, 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 how do you pronounce her name? And so we learned it. Kamala, Kamala. (laughs) It's not Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's Kamala. It took a while. (laughs) Kamala Harris. Kamala? 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 Kamala. I think it's Kamala. 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 (laughs) Kamala. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Officer Harris. We did learn it, and I would like you racist white ladies who keep mispronouncing her name to get it straight. Kamala's, uh... Kamala. Kamala. You had it right. You almost say, got it. I will you say Kamala's name it. any way that I want to. No. But Kamala- if you're going to be a Kamala fan, there's, like, white ladies for Kamala or Karens for Kamala, which is like, ha, 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 we don't take ourselves that seriously. And then there was white dudes for Kamala. There was, like, a van at the DNC, an abortion van where you could get a, like, medical abortion and... Also a vasectomy and the, the just the like idea of dudes lining up for a vasectomy at the DNC is so funny to me. But did people actually get vasectomies? They at were the booked. DNC? They were completely booked. Oh, okay. allegedly. What the fuck is wrong with everyone? You might as well have just had them take your balls while you were at it. <laughs> White cucks for Kamala is what I've been calling it. <laughs> Guys, the only thing that keeps dumpster fire going is your support. Truly. And if you go to Fetacy.com and subscribe, you get to see all the unedited stuff. You get to meet Hopadope back in the day. You get to see all of the peoples 
who come and go and all of the jokes that end up on the cutting room floor, which is 90% of them. And you get to join us in our community, which is growing all the time. And there's so much content. And now you get walk-ins welcome and you'll be supporting that. So we really need your support now more than ever before. It will also motivate me to continue this into the new election like whoever's president, I'm gonna want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna be no matter with that. <laughs> what. I'm going to want to take my life. So you know, for just eighty dollars a year, you can keep a struggling comedian alive. At the very least, don't forget to like, subscribe, and touch my bells and buttons. And you know, tell Maggie in the comments how you're doing. That's what we want to know. <laughs>